two evens are trading. Paper comes in a big seller. 81 evens are trading him on this. 79s are trading. You got 79s trading him on once again. 78s are trading. 6s are trading. 76 evens are trading him on this. On May 6, 2010. The U.S. stock indices crashed as much as 9% within half an hour. The 2010 flash crash went on in history as one of the quickest and the most controversial market crash in the history of finance. Hi, this is Kevin from Highstake. At the 10 years anniversary of the flash crash, we will take a deeper dive into this historic event. This video is based on Lee and Vaughn's book, Flash Crash. The protagonist of the story is Navinder Singh Saral, a British trader who was believed to have caused a flash crash. Nav lived with his parents in their house in London suburb. After graduating from college, Nav spent most of his time in several dead-end jobs. In 2003, Nav applied to a junior's trader position at Independent Derivatives Trader, or IDT, a proprietary trading firm. The proprietary trading firms, or prop shops, is a type of firms where the traders trade the firm's own capital, as opposed to hedge funds whose capital comes from the external investors. There are many categories of prop shops, from the option market makers in Chicago to high-frequency traders in New York. At IDT, Nav begins his career by learning to trade e-mini futures, which are designed to track the major stock indices like the S&P 500. Nav made profits through scalping the e-mini futures. Scalping is a type of strategy that tries to capture small but fast price movements with very tight risk. Unlike others at IDT, Nav is a very quiet trader who prefers wearing an earmuff and sit at the corner desk which he picked for himself. Sometimes, he would even stay late on Friday evenings just to trade the US markets, while all his colleagues are already drinking at the pubs. Nav's trading style is very aggressive in comparison. While other traders always place stop orders to limit the potential losses, Nav rarely uses them, which has been haunting the risk management department. In three years' time, he quickly built up a profit of $400,000. On a typical good day, he can make anywhere between twenty dollars to $50,000. However, since 2007, scalping had become much harder due to the rise of high-frequency trading, or HFT. You can see how quiet it is. The phone's not even ringing. Clients are happy. You know, if there was ever an issue, obviously you would spot it first and the phones would light up. We have executed... 21 million shares already. Wow, and we are not even three minutes in. HFT makes profit by using computers to analyze and trade automatically in a very short time frame. Despite every time it only captures a few pennies or even sub pennies, they can quickly scale up the profits by repeating the process at a much higher frequency. High frequency firms deploy their servers within the same data center where the exchange servers are located just to reduce the latency by a few nanoseconds. Unhappy about his edge being eroded by HFT competitors, Nav accused HFTs of spoofing the markets. Spoofing is an illegal practice to try to influence the market by placing orders without the intention of being filled. For example, this is an order book where all the bids and asks are aggregated. Usually, the bids and asks are relatively balanced. However, when the sizable bid arrives at the order book, the market might perceive it as buying pressure, and others will try to front-run it and lift the prices as a result. And because this large bid doesn't have to be filled at all, the market can be easily manipulated without the manipulator taking any risks. Realizing the immense power of HFT, Nav later decided he needs to up his game to match his competitors. So he hired a programmer to develop a tool which would cancel the orders automatically when the quotes are moving too close to avoid being hit. That way, he could easily push the market in the direction he wants. The program worked out surprisingly well. In the two days before the flash crash alone, he made more than $1.3 million. Finally, the day has come. Due to the Greek debt crisis, the VIX index was up 16% since the beginning of the week. On the morning of May 6, 2010, news came from Greece that the protesters clashed with the police and the negative sentiment sent Euro stocks down 3% for the day. By 12.17 p.m., Nav activated a spoofing program that placed sell orders of more than $200 million. This caused a huge imbalance in the order book and triggered a wave of selling. When the CME circuit breaker kicked in and all the immediate futures trading were on halt, S&P crashed as much as 9% and almost $1 trillion was temporarily wiped off from markets. Within 5 minutes, Dow lost more points than any other time in its 114 years of history. 
The plunge originated from the e-mini futures quickly rippled through the equity markets. IWN, the ETF that tracks Russell 2000 index, went from $50 to less than one cent. By 2.40 p.m., when Nav switched off the program, he already made a profit of $879,000. The flash crash sparked wild speculations from fat fingers to technical glitches. The authorities quickly pinned down an asset manager named Waddell and Reed, the biggest seller who sold $4.1 billion worth of e-mini futures during the crash. It turned out that the fund's portfolio manager was convinced that the market was heading downward, so he decided to short the futures. Unfortunately, the human traders were off the desk on that day, so they had to use an algo trading system to execute the orders. Every minute, the algo will sell 9% of the total volume of the previous minute, meaning if a total of 100 contracts were traded in the last minute, the algo will sell 9 contracts in the next minute. However, they forgot to set the price limit. As a result, the large order size exacerbated the market selling spree, which made the algo sell even more. Five months later, the joint report by the SEC and the CFTC was released. The two agencies concluded that the crash was caused by market fragmentation, general negative sentiment, and large directional bets. This report immediately met a lot of criticisms, especially for the lack of discussion for the possibilities of market manipulation, including spoofing. And because of this, NAV was able to stay under the radar for another two years. In 2012, a Chicago-based algo trader was backtesting his strategy during which he found something odd. He observed that some large orders had been constantly canceled and modified without being hit for 182,000 times over a period of 12 days before the crash. And the notion of all the orders combined was $35 trillion, which equals twice the GDP of the United States. His instinct told him that these orders were all from a single entity that were never meant to be filled in the first place so he tipped off the CFTC with his findings. Three years later, in April 2015, Nav was arrested from his home in London. He was charged for manipulating the markets by using spoofing orders. Fast forward to January this year, the court finally delivered a sentence of one year of home confinement with no jail time and no fines. Nav allegedly made more than $40 million in profits from trading from 2009 to 2015, with 80% of the profits made in the several weeks around the flash crash. However, his lawyers claim that all of his assets have been stolen or otherwise lost in bad investments. Nav's arrest was highly controversial. Many argue that the HFT's practices are way more harmful to the well-being of the financial markets. And the reason that only Nav got caught was that he didn't have an army of lobbyists like the HFTs do. So what do you think? Does Nav really deserve to be the one or the only one to be blamed for the flash crash? Leave your comments below. If you're looking for data for your algo trading system or if you have data sets that you want to monetize, visit highstake.com. Highstake is a data marketplace and the easiest way to explore, share, and monetize hundreds of data products, including core financial, alternative, and web scrape data. Hope you like our video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next video. Take care.